I'm working on a project right now where I'm using three of my machines and I've been using one of my my big big Bertha machine there I call her um, quite a bit lately too so I've left her out so I have all the machines that I generally use on a regular basis out and I thought I'd go through them because I know I've had people ask me about different ones so I'll start with my main machine none of my machines are overly expensive I've never needed an expensive machine I find standard machines work really well because really all you need is a straight stitch maybe something to do some applique with which is why I use this guy here um, and maybe a serger if you do stuff with sergers so this here is the singer quantum stylus 9960 uh, retails in Canada for under 600 bucks free shipping this thing's a workhorse I love it um, I actually have two because one broke during COVID and I couldn't get it fixed so I have another one so I do have one at the shop at the hut and I have one here it comes with all the accessories, your walking foot, everything. It even comes with the, um, if you want to use it, the table. It comes with a hard case. I, I, you can't go wrong. It is electronic, um, but you have all the different needle settings. You can move the needle back and forth. Like, I can't tell you what the settings are, like 20 or something different points. Um, has all the different features. This is uh, the blanket stitch up here is what I use for my applique. It's great. Half this stuff you won't ever use, really, to be honest. But... You know, it's fun if you want to do something decorative, I guess. Um, but yeah, honestly, fantastic machine. Well worth the price. Absolutely love it. Next on that I use all the time, I'll just go through them in order, is this year I also got a Singer Heavy Duty. This is just your baseline model. I wanted it mechanical for easy cleaning. I didn't want the computerized because I already had the Quantum, which is computerized. Um, this here, I when I do a lot of bags and I'm using canvas duck material and I usually go through at least four layers and sometimes a strap in there too so it gets pretty thick this thing here has no issues whatsoever it is fantastic to be able to plow through stuff if you're using layers as a general machine it would also be actually be really good um, you would have to use your feet a little more because you really don't have too many needle positions to play with if you like to play with needle positions like I do you just have three um, but that's pretty standard for a simple machine like this thing was like what under 300 bucks so really um biggest thing that i do look for that i absolutely love top loading bobbin honestly top loading bobbin biggest seller for me that guy right there uh one feature i forgot on this guy quick that i absolutely love is right here cut thread button Cha -ching! it's cut it's fantastic oh my gosh love it use it for piecing because of that but um yeah so back to this guy here great deal honestly you can invest in a Juki if you know if you're doing tons and tons of bags. If you kind of do a good size market amount of bags and stuff like that, or if you're just looking for a bit of a workhorse, that's pretty cheap. Honestly, this this thing's worth it. Okay, next thing I use a lot is my serger. Now this here I have had for so long, like we're talking twenty plus years. Um, if you're Canadian, remember um, <laughs> Zellers? This was got with Club Z points. If that you know tells you the age of this thing, um, I do get it serviced. This thing plows through everything. I love it. I don't think the new sergers honestly work as well. I did get okay. Excuse the mess. That little guy this year um, because I thought oh, maybe make sure. So just getting a bit low. I'll get this guy to sale and it's crap and I don't like it at all. I will be selling it off. If you do clothes, that thing is fantastic. If you do canvas work and stuff like that, that I'm doing here, that thing can't hold up. But this thing here, great. If you find an old singer serger, honestly, it's worth getting it to uh, service. These things are great. Um, next is my least favorite machine and my most expensive machine, which is a jazz tube. This thing costs uh, about 1200 bucks Canadian. I got it because I do all my own quilts. So I wanted the throat space. That's the biggest thing. It is mechanical. It does have needle down, which is uh, very, very useful. Top loading, obviously, um, on the bobbin, which is fantastic. Uh, didn't come with a lot of the bells and whistles. And I definitely needed a walking foot. But thankfully, the coolest thing is the walking foot you get free uh, with the Singer package here. <laughs> that walking foot works on that baby lock yay save myself a hundred bucks there um so that's um i only use this for quilting i just do stitch in the ditch quilting i don't do free motion i suck at it the tension on this thing is a 
uh, let me put this in a very nice way. It's horrible. It, it's seriously horrible. Um, I have this thing set up so it will work perfectly for me. It took me about three days of yelling, screaming, and throwing things in order to get it to that point. Um, if anyone touches any of the dials or anything on this, I would seriously, like, harm them. This, <laughs> this is just, uh... Yeah, not for the faint-hearted, honestly, but if you do a lot of quilts yourself and you want the throat space and you don't mind trying to work with something, then, you know, go for it. But honestly, least favorite machine. Um, last but not least, and I do use this one quite a lot, it's just been serviced, uh, so I haven't got it back out of its, uh, into a place, or, well, I'm running out of tail space anyway. Um, this here is my grandma's 1969 Singer touch and sew it's a double zigzag sewing machine model number 758 and these things are round they're super super cute so at the time this thing was state-of-the-art and if you find one they're fantastic and i'll just see if i can get oh, this out of the way without destroying everything here because i have the book and everything in there okay so down here underneath the foot that you can barely see right here like this top loading bobbin on a 1969 machine yeah it is so cute it carries these special bobbins you can still get them um there's a place in china that makes them you can get them on uh, amazon and so i do have their special ones that actually screw apart they're really really funky um it has all kinds of different stuff. You can change your needle position on this thing. You can change all your stitching. You got buttonholes and stuff. But the coolest thing is this. Okay, so this is normally where you put your spool. Spool's up here. This here is a disc thing. Yes, that's right. It comes with fashion discs. So basically all these funky things here, this machine was one of the first ones to do a lot of those. And I actually have two sets of these. I have that one there. I managed to get um, at a reuse center, Georgetown, Ontario, that posted it and they were from the close by and I ran out and grabbed it. So I had spares, but this here's one, one from my grandma from her original set. It comes with all your different plates, like tons of different plates and different feet and everything. But here's the fashion discs and these things go in there and you can make these things. So here, this is like um, a patchwork feather one. This one here made these little stars. You can see that at the bottom there, little stars. Uh, there's ones that, this here is the applique stitch that I use. Right there. I can do all my general applique on there exactly the same as I can on my other singer. Um, and where's the ducks? Oh my God, I love these ones. Look, little ducks, quack, quack, quack. And there's little leaves and zigzags and all kinds of stitches. And it is just the funnest machine to play with. No joke. It is so cool. If you find one and it's in good shape and you can get it serviced, honestly, that thing is a beast. So those are my five main machines. I do have a couple others. I have my grandma's good Husqvarna upstairs I've never used. I have a brother that I bought during COVID that I do use sometimes too that's this one here my husband got for me, isn't that cute? It is your $99 special, but it's the color he bought for my birthday because I love the color. And in COVID when my quantum broke down and I had to use something else temporarily while I was trying to get another one, hence the brother and then eventually another quantum, um, I actually made a whole quilt on this. It is tiny, it is rudimentary, it is freaking cute. And I made a whole quilt. Like, I'm talking, I quilted on it. Like, you should see me shoving the quilt through that teeny weeny little, like, workspace. But it worked. It did. So, I mean, there you go. These are what I have. I don't have expensive machines. I don't necessarily need expensive machines. If you like them, go for it. Just don't think that you can't quilt because your machine isn't some $3,000 to $10,000 specialty computerized thing. Okay. It is what you need it to be. Um, these ones here are just what I need it to be. So hopefully they'll help you in your decision making. Or if you have any questions on these machines, let me know because I use them all the time. Anyway, so that's my collection. Cheers. <laughs>